Hi, it's Mike Del Story. I'm next to the Brighton District Court. I wanted to talk about a case that I had uh, recently out of the Brighton District Court. And a lot of the cases I have here are roadblock cases. Uh, they do roadblocks on Soldier Field Road uh, frequently. So if you're arrested for an OUI at a roadblock, um, the case will go to Brighton District Court. And these cases tend to be one of the more defensible types of OUI cases. The reason that is there's no evidence of unsafe erratic driving. So on a roadblock, the government's at a major disadvantage because uh, they can't say you were all over the road. They can't say anything about your driving that shows you're under the influence of alcohol. Now, they still can prosecute the case. They'll still try, but it's very difficult for them to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury instruction says that the government doesn't need unsafe, erratic driving to prove somebody's under the influence of alcohol. Uh, but when I argue these in front of a judge or jury, um, I really emphasize that, of course, the government wants that evidence. And when they don't have it, it really seriously weakens their case. So what's a roadblock case going to depend on? It's going to depend on field sobriety exercises. So if you refuse a breath test, they're really going to rely heavily on those exercises, the one leg stand, the nine step walk and turn. Those exercises are easy to attack. Um, and I attack those in, in every case uh, in different ways. In some cases, I'll say, hey, you actually passed those exercises. The officer just didn't give you the credit uh, you deserved. He didn't score it correctly. He just uh, documented everything you did wrong rather than focusing on all the things you did uh, correctly on the field test tests. Um, so in many cases, the officer will say, you, you, know, you missed some steps heel to toe. You didn't keep your feet together. Well, you don't have to perfectly keep your feet together. The, their training allows for a half inch gap. Um, as far as stepping off line, a lot of times it's just very minor uh, and they'll say, well, the other steps were online. So there's a lot of ways that I can um, attack these tests. If it's an arrest by the state police, usually they'll just do the one leg stand, the nine step, and they'll do an HGN test, which doesn't come in evidence. State police typically don't do any alphabet tests, which is a really good test and when, uh, to determine whether someone's under the influence of alcohol. So when there's a lack of evidence, it's something we can point out to in, in arguing that the government doesn't meet their burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, if you took a breath test, um, potentially that can get excluded from evidence. So in a roadblock situation, they're doing all these breath tests in this Batmobile. So they're bringing all these people into a, sort of um, um, a trailer, basically. Um, and and that's not that's not the proper environment to be doing a scientific test. So this Batmobile, where everyone's drinking, there's alcohol around. Uh, you know, scientific tests should be done in, in sort of a sanitized environment. Um, there's other issues too with breath tests. They're supposed to watch you for a certain period of time. It's supposed to consent. The machine's going to be periodically tested and calibrated. So there's a lot of ways that breath tests could get excluded from evidence. And finally, on a roadblock case. Let's say you took a breath test. We can even challenge the basis of the stop in the first place. So roadblocks are an extraordinary um, deprivation of somebody's liberty. You haven't done anything wrong. You drive down the road and they just stop you for no reason. So our Supreme Court says in order for that to be constitutional, the government's got to prove that it's, it, it's complied with certain procedures and written protocol that are set forth in a state police plan, which they call TRF-15. So we can do an evidentiary hearing indicating, one, they didn't have a basis to pull you out of the roadblock. In other words, they didn't have reasonable suspicion to even think that you were under the influence in the first place uh, to justify stopping you and seizing you, and two, that they didn't comply with all the details that are required. So my name's Mike Del Signori, um, 781-686-5924. My cell number, call any time, text any time. I've handled a lot of cases out of Brighton. We've had great success out of this court. And, uh, and if it's a roadblock case, I'll go over the best ways to win that case. It's another type of OUI, we handle those as well. Uh, but frequently, um, you do a lot of roadblocks out of this court. So it's a common question, it's a common uh, type of OUI case that I've handled out of Brighton Court and courts all over Massachusetts. So I'm happy to help call anytime.